Welcome back to the CBS News vice presidential debate. We want to turn now to America's gun violence epidemic. The leading cause of death for children and teens in America is by firearms. Senator Vance, you oppose most gun legislation that Democrats claim would curb gun violence. You oppose red flag gun laws and legislation to ban certain semi-automatic rifles, including AR-15s. So let me ask you, earlier this year, for the first time, the parents of a school shooter were convicted of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Do you think holding parents responsible could curb mass shootings? I'll give you two minutes. Yeah, well, Nora, on that particular case, I don't know the full details, but I certainly trust local law enforcement and local authorities to make those decisions. I think in some cases the answer is going to be yes, and in some cases the answer is going to be no. And the details really matter here, of course. For example, if a kid steals a gun, that's going to be different than if a parent hands over a gun knowing that their kid is potentially dangerous. But look, I, I want to just sort of speak as a father of three beautiful little kids, and our, our oldest is now in second grade. And like a lot of parents, we send our kids to school with such hope and such joy and such pride at their little faces on the first day of school. And we know, unfortunately, that a lot of kids are going to experience this terrible epidemic of gun violence. And of course, our hearts go out to the families that are affected by this terrible stuff. And we do have to do better. And I think that Governor Waltz and I actually probably agree that we need to do better on this. The question is just how do we actually do it? Now, here, here's something that really bothers me and worries me about this epidemic of violence. The gross majority, close to 90 percent in some of the statistics I've seen, of the gun violence in this country is committed with illegally obtained firearms. And while we're on that topic, we know that thanks to Kamala Harris's open border, we've seen a massive influx in the number of illegal guns run by the Mexican drug cartel. So that number, the, the amount of illegal guns in our country is higher today than it was three and a half years ago. But what do we do about the schools? What do we do to protect our kids? And I think the answer is, and I, and I say this not loving the answer, because I don't want my kids to go to school in, an, in, a, in a school that feels unsafe or where there are visible signs of security. But I unfortunately think that we have to increase security in our schools. We have to make the doors lock better. We have to make the doors stronger. We've got to make the windows stronger. And of course, we've got to increase school resource officers because the idea that we can magically wave a wand and take guns out of the hands of bad guys, it just doesn't fit with recent experience. So we've got to make our schools safer. And I think we've got to have some common sense bipartisan partisan solutions for how to do that. Governor, you have two minutes. Well, I think all the parents watching tonight, this is this your biggest nightmare. Look, I got a I got a 17 year old and uh, and he witnessed a shooting at a community center playing volleyball. Those Awful. things don't leave you as a member of Congress. I sat in my office surrounded by dozens of the Sandy Hook parents and they were looking at my seven year old picture on the wall. Their seven year old were dead and they were asking us to do something. And look, I'm a hunter. I own firearms, the vice president is. We understand that the Second Amendment is there, but our first responsibility is to our kids to figure this out. In Minnesota, we've enacted enhanced red flag laws, enhanced background checks, and we can start to get data. But here's the problem. If we really want to solve this, we've got folks that won't allow research to be even done on gun violence. And this idea that we should just live with it. And I, and I, here's what I do think, that this is a good start to the conversation. I 100% believe that Senator Vance hates it when these kids, it, it, it's abhorrent and it breaks your heart. I, I agree with that. But it's, that's not far enough when we know there are things that worked. I've spent time in Finland and seen some Finnish schools. They don't have this happen, even though they have a high gun ownership rate in the country. There are reasonable things that we can do to make a difference. It's not infringing on your Second Amendment. And the idea to have some of these weapons out there, it just doesn't make any sense. Kamala Harris, as an attorney general, worked on this issue. She knows that it's there. No one's trying to scaremonger and say we're taking your guns, but I ask all of you out there, do you want your schools hardened to look like a fort? Is that, is that what we have to go? When we know there's countries around the world that their children aren't practicing these types of drills. They're being kids. We owe it to them to get a fix. These are things that shouldn't be that difficult. You can still keep your firearms and we can make a difference. We have to. If you're listening tonight, this breaks your heart. Senator. 
Tim, first of all, I didn't know that your 17-year-old witnessed the shooting. And I'm sorry about that, and I, I hope that you're doing okay. So. Christ have mercy. Uh, it, is, it is awful. And I, I appreciate what, what Tim said, actually, about Finland, because I do think it illustrates some of the, the, frankly, weird differences between our own country's gun violence problem and, and Finland is, okay, first of all, we have way higher rates of mental health <laughs> abuse or mental health um, substance abuse we have way higher rates of depression, way higher rates of anxiety. We unfortunately have a mental health crisis in this country that I really do think that we need to get to the root causes of, because I don't think it's the whole reason why we have such a bad gun violence problem, but I do think it's a big piece of it. Another driver of the gun violence epidemic, especially that affecting our kids, it doesn't earn as many headlines, but is the terrible gun violence problem in a lot of our big cities. And this is why we have to empower law enforcement to arrest the bad guys, put them away, and take gun offenders off the streets. I think there's a whole host of things that we can do here, but I do think at our schools, we've got to talk about more security. Senator, thank you. Governor, you previously opposed an assault weapons ban, but it's only later in your political career did you change your position. Why? Yeah, I sat in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. Look, the NRA, I was an NRA guy for a long time. They used to teach gun safety. I'm of an age where my shotgun was in my car so I could pheasant hunt after football practice. That's not where we live today. And several things I want to mention on this is talking about cities and where it's at, the number one where the most firearm deaths happen in Minnesota are rural suicides. And we have an epidemic of children getting guns and shooting themselves. And so we have and we should look at all of the issues, making sure folks have health care and all that. But I want to be very careful. This idea of stigmatizing mental health, just because you have a mental health issue doesn't mean you're violent. And I think what we end up doing is we start looking for a scapegoat. Sometimes it just is the guns. It's just the guns. And, and there are things that you can do about it. But I do think that this is one, and I think this is a healthy conversation. I think there's a capacity to find solutions on this that work, protect Second Amendment, protect our children. That's our priority. Gentlemen, thank you. Margaret. Thank you, Nora. Let's turn now to the top contributor to inflation, the high cost of housing and rent.